the federal judges are the ones who can either allow a case to go through or dismiss one. Just like that. For no reason. There is a reason why key people in the FBI and the CIA and the NSA have been sent home, discharged from their duty. There's a reason why. Okay? There's a reason why they hate this president so bad. Not because, listen, they've disagreed with people before. It's, it runs deeper than that. These people are scared. These people are scared. Okay? And that's all I'm going to say on it this morning. You say you one of these conspiracy people? Okay. Turn to Psalm 2 for a minute. <clears throat> By the way, when I say I'm not going to say much on this, just don't hold me to that all the time. <laughs> let, me tell you, let me tell you what's going on. Psalm chapter 2, why did the heathen rage? It's because they're heathen. And the people imagine a vain thing. Now you look at your Bible. If you believe the Bible, you believe this. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. Do you know what that is? That is a conspiracy. That is a conspiracy. When you have more than one person who works to do evil, that is a conspiracy. They've made conspiracy a bad word, and if you believe in a conspiracy, you're nuts, you're crazy, you're, you're not in touch with reality. In other words, dismiss that and don't look at what we're doing. But your Bible tells you, your Bible tells you, this is God saying it, they take counsel together against who? The Lord and against His anointed. Now, that means everything that God anoints. Number one, Jesus Christ. Number two, your Bible. Your Bible is anointed by God to say things and given authority by God to say things that you may not want said. Amen? Evil people don't want them said. That's why there is a battle for the Bible in this country. Okay? Let us break, and here's what they're saying. Let us break their bands asunder. The Bible says that a threefold cord is not easily broken. Those are bands. It's three smaller strings woven together in such a way as that the collective strength of all of them is not easily broken. And they're saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. They do not want right things and righteousness and righteous laws to prevail in this country. Now, boy, I better get with the message. I'm telling you, this Bible's right. This Bible is right in everything it says. And... And let's bring it down to you and I. Let's bring it down to this church. Let's bring it down to faith. Let's bring it down to the attack that literally is from within each one of us against the truth. Isaiah 59 verse 1. <clears throat> Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. That is the truth. God is not impotent. He's omnipotent. He, that, doesn't, that means he's not weak, he's all-powerful. God, God is still God, God is still Lord, he's still the judge, he's still the righteous king, he's still in charge. Neither is his ear, his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But, and, you, and, and let me tell you, wicked people in this world do not want God mixed into their bunch. They do not want God brought into the picture. Why? Because their iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. The, uh, the prophets came to e the prophet Ezekiel and they said, inquire to God for us. And I think they were mocking him, but be it as it may, they say, inquire of God for us and, and tell us what God has to say. And Ezekiel went to God and God said, should I be inquired at all by these men? Should I listen to what they say? Should I respond to them? Should I even talk to them? He said, they've got idols. Their heart is full of iniquity. Their heart is full of idols. And he said, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to answer them according to the iniquity that's in their heart. And he said, if they deserve to be lied to, I'm going to let them be lied to. And God lets people be lied to. Don't. don't. Amen. 
Anyway, he said, uh, verse 3, For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue have muttered perverse. I'm not even going to ask you to raise your hand and, and tell me if you've lied or not, because I know you have. I know you have. I've done it. My family's done it. People in this church have done it. People watching online have done it. The truth of it is, we've all got lies and perverseness inside of our mouth. It's not what goes in the body that defiles you. What is it? It's what comes out of you that defiles you. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has uttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, uh, nor any pleaded for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Look at the language of your Bibles. Something gets birthed out of your lies. Think about that. Think about what I just said for a minute. Something gets birthed from your lies. When David committed that adultery with Bathsheba, he tried covering it up, first of all, by having her wife, which, or her husband, which, by the way, was on the list of David's mighty men. This is one of the most trusted men in David's army. And David brought this man home to cover up his iniquity. And when he wouldn't do it, David sent him out and sent word he's to go to the front of the line because I want him dead. The man was killed to cover up David's iniquity. This is a man after God's own heart, the Bible says. Because of his sin, a child was born. But that child suffered for what David, his father, did. Not for what he did. That child died. And it is the truth with our sins and our transgressions. Somebody innocent always pays the price, don't they? Because you know what we like to do? We like to blame somebody else. Something gets done that ain't right. It is in our nature to want to pass blame onto somebody else. So that somebody else gets looked at, somebody else takes the heat, and we don't have to. Boy, this is true, isn't it? I told you, when I don't feel good, I'm cranky. I'm not normally like this. I'm real nice, friendly, don't mean anybody any harm. But this Bible's right. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrices' eggs. A cockatrice was, I believe the Bible, it was a sort of a weird-looking flying serpent. Now, your Bible mentions flying serpents. There we have the skeletal remains of flying serpents, believe it or not. They're in museums. They call them pterodactyls, whatever. They are the, they are the skeletal remains of, of this Bible being right. Okay? And plus, when you think about that, when you think of a, a, it was like a serpent. When you think of serpent, who do you think of? The devil. And they weave spider's web. What is it they call the worldwide, worldwide? Do you know why? Because that it's exactly what it is. It is a net, work that too many people are caught in. You know what I'm saying? Too many people are caught in a net of the internet. Maybe you're not looking at something dirty. But maybe the lies that are being told out there, you're starting to buy into them. And you're getting caught up in it. You know what your best remedy for that is? Unplug the internet for a few hours and get your Bible out and read it. Okay? That we with spider's web, and he that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. The, you know what that is? The egg is hatched. The egg is hatched. 
I could preach a message on that, not prepared for it, but some thoughts in mind. Socialism is the unhatched egg of communism. You are not looking at a socialist pastor. You're not looking at a communist or a communitarian or anything like that. I believe in personal responsibility. Personal salvation. God is a personal God. He both is God of the church, which is the, the body, the corporate, but he's God of the individual. What did Jesus say about the body? If thy right hand offend thee, why? Because which is better? To let the right hand affect the entire body and kill it? Or cut off the right hand so that the body is saved? Which is better? Cut it off. Okay? You know what that means? That if one refuses salvation, we're not going to take that out on the rest of the people who still want it. Amen? Socialism and communism says that if one person is making 100000 a year, everybody must make $100,000 a year or nobody can make $100,000 a year. And that is a lie. That is a lie. Jesus even taught against it in the parable of the ten virgins. Because five were wise and five were foolish. Five of them refused to undertake the personal responsibility of reading and believing their Bible. That's why they had no oil in their lamp. And when it came time to need that oil, they went to the five that had it, and the five that had it said, if we, if we give you ours, there won't be enough for us and you. So how stupid is that? Go buy for yourself. They did, Jesus did not tell them, you give them your oil because that's the right thing to do. That's the fair and balanced thing to do. You've got one chance in this life. It's called your life to get things right between you and God and put oil in your lamp. One chance. And today is that chance. Amen? Now, let's move on before I get shaky. Verse 6, their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Listen to what people do. Listen to what people do. They could be the worst, most evil sinner out there, and they will cover their wickedness up with something that they did good. You know, mafia killers give out dollar bills in the neighborhood they live in to all the children? Why doesn't that make them nice people? They're still killers. And this is our nature. This is how we are. It ought to be fought against, not embraced. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works, and their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts... Let me tell you something about innocent blood. A million unborn, aborted babies in this country is innocent blood. Let's cover up the dirty deeds that we did by killing the child before it's ever born. That's wicked. They make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. Look at San Francisco. It is a manure pile. It is a cesspool of liberal programs that do not work. Verse 8. The way of peace they know not. Watch this. And she got mad the man wouldn't shake her hand. There is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. And whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Let me tell you something. They want a war in this country. They want a war in this country. And I'm afraid they're going to get one. 
Uh, listen, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. Especially not while I don't feel good. But even Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson, who at best believed in a very distant, very far away God, said, and I'm just trying to remember this best I can, I'd rather die free than live a slave. Now, John chapter 8, turn there. Believe me, I tried to get another preacher to come in this morning. Trust me, I did, I tried. <clears throat> and God said no. So, if you get mad at me, get mad at God, it was God's fault. Okay? Because I did, I tried to get somebody, the doctor told me to stay home today. So I tried to get somebody else and they couldn't come. John chapter 8. Now, who am I preaching this to? Number one, all of us. God's people first. God's people first. Judgment must begin at the house of God. Amen? And what I'm trying to tell you is we were born with a depraved nature. Don't give me this nonsense that all children are born little angels and they have to be taught bad things. I didn't. It came naturally. It was handed down genetically to me. And the lies I would be fought against, not embraced. Because here in a minute, Romans chapter 1, I learned something from Romans chapter 1 last night. I never saw it before. But it'll show you the course of your personal lies. It'll show you the course of it and the outcome of it. And I promise you, you won't like it. You will not like it. And I'm, I'm not saying what you believe to be a lie or what you believe to be a truth and ain't. I'm telling the lies that you tell. The things that you personally try to cover up. Now, I'm not one that says we got to get up and tell all of our personal sins. Everybody's got to know about everything we do or we're not right before God. That is unbiblical. I must be accountable to God at all times for every action that I do, every thought, every word, everything that I say, everything that I do. I must be held accountable by God because God is the one who knows that I did them. He's the one that knows my guilt and or innocence. And if I lie to myself and I lie to God, what does it accomplish me? And is it possible to listen to and believe your own lies? Brother George, that fish story, the first version of it didn't match the tenth version of it. The tenth version got better. Well, it's the one you told. And 20 years from now, the one you remember is the made-up one, not the real one. Am I right on this? We do it. It is in our vile nature to substitute a deliberate lie for the truth. We know it. We know it ain't true. We substitute it and replace You know why? I know why. Because there's things about me that I don't like thinking about. There's truths about me that I don't like dealing with. And it's easier to believe the made up version than to believe the real one. But it's more profitable for me in eternity to face the truth. John chapter 8, verse 42. <clears throat> Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, you would love me. See, if you really love God, if you really love God, you would tell the truth to God. 
You wouldn't hide it from him. You wouldn't lie to him. You wouldn't lie about it. God made me aware many years ago that this whole world was not about me. There were things that were far more important than me and what I wanted. Marriage was one of them. See, marriage as a symbol and marriage for what it really is is far more important than what I personally want or lust after in this world. Who'd say amen to that? So you know what some people would rather do? Destroy a marriage to cover up a lie. They don't think right. They don't act right. And they're not right. See, if God were your father, you would love Jesus. And if you love Jesus Christ, by the way, you'll love this. They called it, it's called the Word of God. So is Jesus. They are one and the same. And Jesus said in John 17, Thy word is truth. So if God is your Father, then you will love this. Amen? For if I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but He sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my what? My word. You know why you can't hear his word? You don't believe it. You don't love it. And you don't want it. So look what he said in verse 44. Look at who you are. You are of your father the devil. Now don't get mad. I'm the mailman. I'm just the mailman. You don't like the bill you got? It ain't the mailman's fault. And if you don't like the judgment that comes from the court, it ain't the mailman's fault. If you don't like the, the word, it ain't the deliverer's fault. You are of your father, the devil. Do you know what that means? You're not saved. You're not saved. You're not born again. God is not your God. He is not your father. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Let's get back to this personal issue. Of whether or not you're going to tell the truth about yourself. When a person, all they do is prop up themselves, that person's a liar. If all they do is talk about themselves and how good they are and what good they do and how right they are and on and on and on, that person's a liar. They're propping themselves up with their own lies because they have nothing else. And we just learned from the scriptures, they use, they, use that to, they use that like Adam and Eve did the fig leaves. They use it to cover up their own sins. And God said, it'll never, it'll never cut it in my courtroom. That's what God says. God says, your fig leaves will not hide you from my judgment. It will not shield you. So you know what people do? They defend themselves with lies. I did not do that. I would never do that. I am not that kind of person. That was somebody else. That's, you know, you know what I hear on live PD every week? That ain't mine. It was in your pocket. That's not my pants. What's this other stuff you got shoved up there? That ain't mine either. And they lie, they, and they would gladly, they would gladly pin it on anybody else, including the innocent, rather than taking up the responsibility for what they did. Cubby, am I right on that? 
I'm not trying to be vulgar, but did you ever have to dig something out of somebody? Where was I? Uh, Verse 44 again. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? That, and this is Jesus saying that. He's saying, which of you is going to accuse me of doing something wrong? Because they did. The whole, the whole nation of Israel accused Jesus of wrongdoing. He didn't do nothing wrong. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Listen to that. If you're really of God, And you know, those of you who know me, you know, I tell you, don't listen to what I say. You listen to what this book says. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to believe this. Because if you're of God, if you are born of this, you'll believe this. But if not, well, that's, that was made up. That, that story in Genesis about the creation, that's, that's been proven a fairy tale. That Noah's Ark deal, they, just, they just discovered that was a lie. Archaeology has proved that to be a lie. All the universities have come out and said that that's, that story is not true. The Red Sea crossing never happened. That was made up in Hollywood. And you can just keep going on and on and on with what you believe the Bible to be wrong about. But he that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because you're not of God. Now, turn to Romans chapter. Now, now I'm going to start preaching. Romans chapter 1 is going to get rough. And I guarantee you, God's preached this to me before I ever got a chance to get up here in front of you. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. And there's things I wrote down here so I wouldn't forget them. And I have them underlined in the text. I want you to turn to the text. And there'll be some things I may want you to underline, maybe to write some things down. I appreciate those who take note, not because of some nice thing I said, but you're in a classroom. You take notes in classroom. You go back and study it some more. Find out whether it's true or not. Write down something I said. Write down something I said. And then you go back to the Word of God to find out if what I said was true or it was a lie. That's all you got to do. God taught me that one time. I had a man come up to St. Louis, sent by the Prophecy Club years ago back in the 90s. And he was going to make all these prophecies over the St. Louis area. So I went, I, I didn't know if he was telling the truth or not. I went, I, I took a notebook and I wrote, I mean, I wrote everything down. And when I left there that night, I went to God and I said, God, now I don't know if this man's telling the truth or not. But God... Let God be true and all men liars. So God, if he's telling the truth, then show it to me out of the Bible. I'll believe it. But if it's not in the Bible, I won't believe it. So he made all these predictions of things that was going to happen in the St. Louis area. Now that was 1997. He, hit, he struck out every one of them. None of them happened. There have been no tanks in the streets. Okay? It, none of it happened. So, Romans 1 is going to tell you the consequences. And again, it's not about what, well, somebody else lied. Is that, so let's go back to when you were six, shall we? Does that mean you can lie? Because they lied, you can lie. Is that how it is now? We playing that game? No. If they lie, it's on them. If they want to cover up their own sins, they're going to cover it up. Don't you be a part of it. Don't I be a part of it. Don't ask me to be a part of it. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Hey, I believe that. 
I can look at trees, I can look at the grass, I can look at space, I can look at water in the sea, I can look at all kinds of things and say, yep, there's a God. There is a God. Even things from the creation of the world are clearly seen. They said the invisible things of Him. I've never seen God. So you're saying, Mike, you, you live in a fairy tale fantasy world because you believe in a God that you've never seen. I have not seen God, but I've seen the evidence of God. And the evidence tells me He's real. Amen? The evidence tells me He's real. Even His eternal power and Godhead. You know what that means? The Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. So that they are without excuse. Because that, and let me say this, don't think your ignorance of God's Word is going to get you off the judgment that's coming down on you. Well, I didn't know that was wrong. Is ignorance ever a defense against a crime? Nope. Nope. I like it when these guys say, I know my rights, man. I know my rights. Really? What law school did you go to? That gets me. Usually the guy saying that has got something in his pocket he don't want the cops to find out about. Verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful. So here's God. He's the, he's the judge of all mankind, is He not? You say, Pastor, you don't judge me. You're right. You're exactly right. Only God judges me. Better watch out then. Because I didn't follow you around with a camera. But I know the one that did. He recorded every deed, every word, and get this. This is, this is where you're going to really get in trouble. Every thought. Think of the Ten Commandments. One of them is a thought only sin covetousness you can covet something and nobody in the world know about it you guys can have your eyes on a woman and nobody know about it you ladies can have your eye on a man and nobody know about it you can lust after somebody's house which he told you not to do and nobody would know it. You could even go further than that. And nobody would know it. Except God. He knows it. So if you want this business of only God judges me, be prepared for those consequences. Because God's going to pull out things on you that you don't want pulled out. And let me tell you something. That doesn't just happen at the end of your life at Judgment Day. You know what God told David? For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel. God took David's sin that he wanted so bad covered up and exposed him for who he was to his entire nation. Do you want your name on a sex offender registry? Ask my sister. She's not on one. I had to follow that up immediately. But she works in the sheriff's office and handles that now. People you would never think so verse 21 because that when they knew God they glorified him not as God neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations now, I have that underlined and their foolish heart was darkened so number one when you lie you have it's because you have vain imagination vain imaginations you have two parts to your brain everybody look up here you have two parts to your brain two hemispheres this side over here deals with the truth it deals with facts, numbers, multiplication, addition, things add up, things don't add up. 
when we tell the truth, we use this side of our brain to reference facts that are stored in our memory. This side of your brain over here is the creative side. It draws pictures. When we lie, we don't have facts, do we? So what do we have to do? Draw a picture of what it looks like so we can tell somebody this is what really happened. That is what a vain imagination is. Your imagination is to be cast down because it stands against the knowledge of God. And you know what that is? What God knows about you. You can draw all the pretty pictures of yourself that you want and that you want everybody to think about you. But God is the one who knows the truth, is he not? So, back to that. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but become vain in their imaginations. And, there's the second one, they have a dark heart. The heart, in the Bible, is always the seat of our soul and our decisions. The heart is. Not the brain. The heart is where your soul is. The heart is where what you really want comes out of you. Amen? What you really want. And if what you really want is to serve God and be at peace with God, that will come out of you. But if what you really want is to continue in sin and hide that from everybody so you can keep doing it. Let me tell you something. There's a cover-up going on in Washington, D.C. And it ain't from the president. There are a lot of evil people. A lot of them who do not want the truth to come to light, and they will do anything to stop it. Their vain heart is dark. I promise to install seat belts in all the pews, because every now and then you might need one of them. Verse 22. Here's what your lies do. Profess you... Your lies profess yourself to be wise. Smarter than everybody in the room. Able to get away with things that people can't figure out how I'm getting away with them. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. So, they thought higher of themselves. But in truth, let me go back to this. In truth, watch this. They think highly of themselves, but all it does is make them look foolish. Am I right? I got one with me. Now, I'll be standing by him when the shooting starts. Not in front of him, behind him. I'm behind you all the way, brother. <laughs> I really mean that. <laughs> They will stop at nothing to cover up the truth. And it's sad when politicians do it. It's sickening when church people do it. Their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And watch this. They changed... The glory of the uncorruptible God. Now what's that about? Hang on a second. I'm sorry I have to do that, but you don't want what comes out. God shines brighter than... See that sun out there? That just popped out. You can go out there, you're not going to see any clouds, you're not going to see the moon either. Because the sun shines brighter than that. You know what these people don't want? They don't want anybody outshining them. Why, look at me. Look at how bright I am. Look at how righteous I am. Look at how good I am. So they will reduce God and His Word down to a level below them so that they shine brighter and are out there being believed instead of God's Word being believed. They change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. That'd be like putting a big statue up here in front of the whole church 
of Mike Hoggard. Big statue. So that everybody looks at me, and nobody looks at what we're supposed to look at, which is God and God's Word. They make it like the corruptible man, and man is corruptible. You just offer him enough money, or enough motivation, and he'll lie. And to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and creeping things. So, here's the consequences of when you lie. Number one, God also gave them up to uncleanness. So God, they would rather change the glory of God, and they would rather change the truth of God. Jesus said, John 17, thy word is truth. They'd rather change that into a lie. Let the Bible be wrong and me be right, is what they're saying. It's not, it, it's not, um, it's not how God says it, it's how I say it that counts. And where the Bible disagrees with you and your lifestyle, then the Bible must be wrong, and you're the one that's right. But that's not the case. So, they changed the truth of God into a lie, worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. For this cause, let's see, I missed something. Let me go back, verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. What do you think that's talking about? It, what you think it's talking about, it's talking about. I guarantee it's talking about it. And our nation is full of this. And our churches are full of it too. And ought not be. Ought not be. That's the result. That sin is not the disease. It's the symptoms of the disease. The disease is lying. So God gave them up to uncleanness. Verse 25, we changed the truth of God into a lie. So let's rewrite the Bible. Has it been done? Yes, and it's in a constant state of being redone. So much so. I made this point last week, the week before that. The New International Version that came out in 1984 is not the same New International Version that's out now. The one that's out now has taken out all of the sexist, homophobic language. You know, like calling a guy a he, and a female a woman. Well, that's sexist and homophobic. So we took that out. Even though it doesn't match the original Greek of the Bible, it doesn't match it at all. We took that out, and we took away God's masculinity because that might offend some and we don't want them to be offended so let's take that out what they're doing to suit their own dark heart they change the Bible rather than believe the Bible that's the symptoms of the disease the disease remember is your lies not not God's God's not capable of it so, for this cause, God gave them up, verse 26, unto vile affections. Vile affections. So what does that mean? To be, to have an affection towards something that is not natural. Monkeys know the difference between a boy monkey and a girl monkey. They know the difference. That's nature. Your plumber knows the difference between a male and a female plug. That's nature. Look at what happens. Verse 26, God gives them up unto vile affections. Their affection is not natural it's vile it stands against nature and you know what the declaration of independence said nature and nature's god the one who designed 
nature. It's who it is against. For even, oh, should I even read this? Or would it be inappropriate? Now, in case you think I'm something, you know what this is coming out of me? Corruption. Corruption. I've got it in me like, why do I preach and say the things I'm saying? Because I'm not stupid. And I'm not innocent. I'm not innocent. My body is just as vile as yours and everybody else's is. I know what corruption is. My body's producing it in gallons right now. So I know what I'm talking about. But vile affections, even their women, did change the natural use into that which is what? Read it out loud. Against nature. Verse 27, and likewise also the men, leaving the what? Natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, one toward another. You know what that phrase is in Latin? I'm not being vulgar here. Homo. Hence the term homosexual. It is a person who is sexually attracted to their own gender. Read that again. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is what? Unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. So to ask a question, does God judge man's sin? And remember, that men with men was just what God turned them over to. But it started with lying. So verse 28, and even as, that, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God is truth, God is never a lie, so if you don't like to retain God in your knowledge, you don't retain truth in your knowledge. You don't think truth. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. The word reprobate means they violated probation. I can understand probation in cases where everybody makes mistakes. Raise your hand. Everybody raise, everybody raise your hand. You're on camera. Everybody does something stupid. Everybody, probably most everybody in this room, broken the law at one time in their life. You tell God, thank you, I'm not asking you to stand up and tell us which ones. Because I won't tell you mine. But probation is designed to give man a second chance. Which is what God has done. Has he not? Of course he has. He's given all of us a second chance. But there are some people who just won't change. And they never will. And you know what? I feel sorry for people like that. I really do. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And then verse 29 already tells us what is in our wicked hearts. There's a list here. Number one, all unrighteousness. Well, that pretty much, I could stop here and we could go home. That covers everybody. Everybody and everything. Number two, it's not just homosexuality, it's fornication. I'm not, I'm not just preaching against one type of sin. I'm going to name it all. If you did it and it's wrong, it's wrong. 
I don't care who you are, what status you have in the church. I don't care what, how much money you make a year or where you came from or what your last name is. It doesn't matter. If you did it and it's wrong, it is wrong. All unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness. Now, I mentioned covetousness a while ago as the thought sin. And I'm just telling you. I've said this many times before. You might think you're not guilty of breaking God's Ten Commandments until you get to the tenth one. And then you come in church one day and you tell us all how you went a whole week without lusting after something. We don't have that service here. Because it's not possible. Am I saying the truth? It's not possible. As long as you've got eyes and a will, you'll covet something in this world. You'll see it and want it. Yeah, there is a difference between wanting and taking. Covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy. Murder. James said, he that hateth his brother is a murderer. <laughs> Debate. Doesn't matter, what I, doesn't matter what I've said in this message. In your mind, you've debated everything I've said. You've contradicted everything that's come out of my mouth today. <laughs> Who are you trying to convince? <laughs> Deceit. There it is. Malignity. You know what that means? You infect others with your lies. You are malignant. You are a cancer that should be cut off. Whisperers. Backbiters. Backstabbers. Haters of God. Despiteful. Proud. You know, they get away with gay pride parades. Could we get away with a Christian pride parade in this country? <laughs> They'd call us every name in the book if we did that. Now they call them Trump rallies. Proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers. We live under the new covenant, but you've broken that one because you don't believe the Bible. Without natural affection. You know what it means? It goes back to the other one. Your affections are unnatural. It is not natural for a man to want to be with a boy. It is not natural. Natural, implacable, unmerciful. And you look at this, verse 32, and I'm done. Who knowing this, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Now, again, I did not say that. I repeated what God said. They that commit such things are worthy of death. Do we not agree on that? Say amen. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. When you go along with somebody else's lies and somebody else's wicked deeds, then you become, in the eyes of the law, a co-conspirator with them. The person you handed your drugs to so you wouldn't get caught, you just brought them in on it in the eyes of the law. You could say all day long, but it wasn't mine. It wasn't mine. I like this. This is my favorite. Do you know that car's stolen? Yeah, but it ain't mine. 
Yeah, you stole it. It ain't yours. When you bring somebody else in, you listen to me. When you bring somebody else in on your cover-up, now you've made them just as guilty as you are. Don't ask me to cover up your sins. I have had the, un, well, I say unfortunate. I've been, it's, it's a blessing, it really is. When people have come to me and told me they've done things wrong. People have told me things, I've told other people things. None of us like it. But it's truth. And according to scripture, as soon as, as soon as somebody tells me, Pastor, I did it, it wasn't right, but I did it, it's over. It's over. In the eyes of God and me, it don't go nowhere. Now that's not me covering up somebody, that's how God said it to be. Brethren. If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one. Is that not right? Have not wives had to forgive their husbands and vice versa? And should it go anywhere beyond that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But when we lie, when we lie to cover up our own transgression, or those of somebody else. We serve the creature, which is us, more than the creator. All of this is done to benefit ourselves, our lust, our pride, and before all others, and before God. We put ourselves before everybody else, and we put ourselves before God. Should we, address, should we arrest drunk drivers? Why? Why? Tell me why. They kill people. They are a danger to themselves and other people. Same principle. Same idea. Same concept. But when you go out and get liquored up and you get behind the wheel, it's all about you. You don't care about anybody else. You don't care about nothing. You care about you. And the consequences are worse. Because whereas before there could have been forgiveness by God and by others, instead, God gave up on you. Now, a lot of people gave up on me a long time ago. You nodding your head. It's like me asking my mom, Mom, tell me the truth. Was I adopted? And she said, yeah, but they gave you back. <laughs> I got to go home. But for God to give you up, what have you done? What have you done to yourself? When God gives up, you're done. And all there is for you to wait for and look forward to is hell. Because that's all you got coming. Let's bow our heads. This is stuff preachers used to preach a long time ago and quit doing. Because... <clears throat> sin became such commonplace in churches that it got them thrown out, got them fired. Or in some cases, preachers get blackmailed. And so the preacher just doesn't preach anymore. 
But I love you more than that. And I love God more than that. And it's not easy to bear. That feeling you get when you wake up in the middle of the night remembering something you did a long time ago. Something you don't want to remember. It's hard to take. But give it to God. That way you'll stop running. You'll stop running. Father, whoever is guilty, forgive them. Lay it not to their charge. This message was not about me coming down in judgment on anybody. I don't have a right to. It was about repeating mercy, forgiveness, and grace. None of us are worthy of the grace and the forgiveness, but all of us stand in need of it. Father, the Bible says that if thou wouldest mark iniquities, who should stand in your sight? None of us would. So, Father, fill us with guilt, but for a season. Then let those who are godly confess their sins, repenting of those sins, filled with horror over those sins, and let you give them the strength and turn them from those sins. And God, please, Don't turn any of us over. And don't declare us reprobate. And please, God, don't give up on us. For you're all we have. So, Father, use this message and my weakness to be a blessing to somebody who needed a blessing to be mercy and forgiveness to someone who stands in need of mercy and forgiveness and not your wrath. Reserve your wrath for those, Father, that truly are reprobate and refuse to change and then become a danger to everybody else. Reserve your wrath for them, but not for your saints who out of truthfulness of heart turn to you and say, Father, forgive me. Father, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew in us a right spirit. Cast us not away from thy presence. Take not thine Holy Spirit from us. Restore unto us the joy of thy salvation is our prayer today. Bless us, dismiss us now in your care, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Consider yourself dismissed.